Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video, and it's Star Wars Day, so of course I like to do a um, special video at this time of year. This time around, I thought I would tell you about our trip to Tatooine. This was a pretty cool experience, uh, and something I recommend for any Star Wars fan, especially since, um, in this case, for the Tatooine trip, it's dirt cheap, easy to do. Um, let me tell you what got us started here. Um, I, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, when they had wrapped up production of the very first film, uh, both in Africa and in England, when during the editing stage, George Lucas had realized, I'm missing a couple of scenes here. I need to show bits like when R2-D2 gets captured by the Jawas and that kind of stuff. Well, rather than fly all the way back to uh, Africa to, to do those shots again, he asked around and it was decided, you know what, Death Valley in California is actually a pretty close match to some of that rocky area you filmed in in Tunisia. Just go out there and you can probably match up uh, some of the landscape. So I don't know that George himself went on the trip. I've got some pictures here of the um, production crew that went into Death Valley and uh, got a couple of Jawas and did some, some shots here. But some critical scenes were actually filmed in Death Valley. And I just thought, hey, why don't we go and do that, film ourselves around a couple of the rocks, and just have a good laugh. And also, it's worth noting, there have been many fans have done this before, and it was really helpful that um, there's one particular group, I'm going to put a link down below to their website, who have done this a few times, their map showing where to go and their instructions as to where to point your camera were really, really helpful in us managing to get this uh, trip accomplished. So, so I definitely wanted to shout out Steve Hall's trip to Death Valley and his website is below because without this, I never would have been able to manage this. And it's a great resource if you're planning to do a trip yourself. There are a few books you can buy on this subject, but there's a really good website I recommend called StarWarsLocations.com. Again, I'll put a link down below to theirs. Um, it hasn't been updated for a while, but uh, I used StarWarsLocations.com for several journeys, uh, this one being chief among them. And there's a really good collection of photos. I don't know that they're still up there, but I had saved them for research materials and lining up the shots. Uh, one guy managed to expertly line up his camera at the right time of year and the right time of day to make his shots look exactly like they appear in the film. As you're about to see, when we went to do this, the shots, although we got the camera in the right, uh, right location, the shadows were not right sometimes, the, um, the ground didn't look as golden, it was kind of more of a grayish color, and I think that's just because when we went, it was maybe the wrong time of year. So we might actually uh, do a follow-up trip to Death Valley. I was sort of planning that this year, but the timing didn't work out. I would love to be able to recreate these shots exactly like this guy did because he did an amazing job. However, let's get on to my particular trip. So having checked our bags in at the cabin in Furnace Creek, which despite the frightening name is an awesome place to stay, I highly recommend it, we all got into the van and drove off to Golden Canyon, which I decided would be a good place to start because it was the middle of the day and this is the shot where R2-D2 first encounters or first lays eyes on the Jawas. What's funny is we got out of the car and started walking into the canyon not realizing we were also walking into another shot. There became a running joke among my crowd that um, George Lucas doesn't like to really get out of the car or the parking lot when he does a film shot, does he? Because lo and behold, as we left the vehicle and walked into the canyon, we were actually walking into the rocky formation where you can hear the echoing sound of the sand people having knocked Luke Skywalker on the ground. But we didn't even notice that. We walked straight into it, completely oblivious, and started to look around in Golden Canyon. Now, I was under the impression, not realizing that the film crew didn't like going very far from the parking lot, I thought, yeah, we're going to have to trudge for miles up into this uh, canyon before we're going to find anything that remotely looks like the film. And uh, it was, in fact, my wife who pointed at one particular rock formation and said, isn't this that thing you were looking for? Because uh, I was trying to find the spot where the rocks fall down almost what looks like a set of steps 
Uh, it's Artu's first indication that he's not alone in the canyon. He looks around. Uh, Ajawa is sort of moving away and some rocks drop. And I said, right, we got to find this spot that has all these rocks or this, this sort of staircase looking thing. And my wife had said, uh, it's right here. We walked right on past because I thought, no, 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 it's got to be miles down into the canyon. And uh, nope, lo and behold, she was right. It was right there, like around the first corner. And then we spotted the boulder, which is uh, in the film slightly more on a tilt. And some brave actor must have gotten inside with some pair of Jawa eyes and moved around and indicated there's something in the darkness that R2 is uh, about to encounter. Um, it, when we spotted it, we're like, oh yeah, yeah, because I had, I had noticed from uh, some of these other fans that had gone to Death Valley that boulder has moved over the decades. And so when I saw that it's not really on that tilt anymore, I immediately recognized it. Had to get a picture, and I even added my little uh, Jawa stuffed plushy figure with me to represent. So uh, that was a first indication to me, we're here. We have arrived in the scenes from Star Wars. And then looking back the way we came, we realized the rocky formation was actually the bluff that R2 is kind of turning around in uh, just prior to the Jawas jumping out and zapping him with their guns. The very first thing you're going to notice here, this does not look like it does in the film. This is why I say I would maybe like to go back and redo Death Valley because this particular picture, and I'm holding up my R2-D2 action figure here, uh, it doesn't quite match how it appears in the film, but I can assure you that is the shot. That is the angle. Now, I wandered around a bit more because I knew there was also a shot from this early bit where R2 is rolling through the um, little canyon we see a Jawa peering between these giant rock cliffy areas. He's way up on a ledge. And I knew that was near here because of the websites that had mentioned it. I thought, well, we've lucked out in finding a couple of these things very close to the parking area. Maybe it's here. And then we did spot what kind of looked like maybe it was the right area. Got my shot of the Jawa again. Uh, the lighting is all wrong. It would be better to do this on an overcast day, I guess. But we got it. Now, some of those other fans have found a lot of other shots in Golden Canyon. There's some bits where the Jawas kind of peek out from their various rocks. We didn't manage to locate those. Again, I want to do Death Valley again properly, but uh, I, it was very important to me to get a couple more shots, though. There is one well-known bit where a Jawa has kind of peeked around from behind an outcropping of rock that almost looks like an ear. And that was actually pretty easy to spot, but it was high up. So it required a bit of climbing up to uh, get up to it. But lo and behold, got up there, even had my little stuffed Jawa do that bit. And then I had decided, well, we've spent enough time here. We've got a few other places we need to go. Let's go up and I want to have the rock falling down the staircase thing, the, the, the location that my wife spotted right away. And that was interesting because when we got to that spot, I decided I want to climb up and at least make a couple of bits of gravel roll down because it's such a, a pivotal moment in the film. Not a pivotal moment, but it's a moment that I always remember where the little trickle of gravelly rocks falling down what kind of looked like a little staircase there. So I had determined I want to get up here. I want to make some rocks fall. So we did that and that was fun. And then when I looked back down where everybody was standing, I noticed two outcroppings of rock that were also a shot. And I quickly said, can somebody please grab me the camera? And I'm going to put my R2-D2 up in the, uh, in the shot here because this is the scene from the point of view of the Jawas as they watch R2-D2 rolling by. There's these two outcroppings that almost look like stone faces in a way, and R2 rolls between, and I just immediately, as, as I was standing up there, having pushed the little trickle of gravel down, I look back, I'm like, there's those two outcroppings of rock that look kind of like human faces. Let's get the camera. Let's recreate the scene. We found one by mistake. Uh, that, was, that was very, very lucky for us. Next, according to the website, is the place where the Bantha sequence was filmed. And yes, a, an elephant was actually dressed up and taken up into this area. Now, we didn't have much success in locating the exact shot. 
Uh, we took Badwater Road, which sounds like something from a, a heavy metal album. Uh, we, we took it to the location we were told to do so. We got out of the car because you have to do a bit of a hike for this particular one. And we think we maybe spotted the range of hills where the elephant would have done his scene. It was um, getting a little bit later in the day at this point, and I still wanted to get to some shots before sundown. And having hiked up and done a bit of a look around, we eventually gave up. But uh, my brother-in-law did take a couple of shots. I think he's right. I think this was where the sequence was filmed. Again, a future trip to Death Valley would correct for this. By this point, the sun was starting to get a little low on the horizon, and I knew we still had a couple more shots to get. So we got back in the vehicle and headed over to Artist Palette, which is also nicknamed by Star Wars fans, R2's Arroyo. On the way there, though, we did have to stop the car before we got to Artist Palette in a kind of a weird intersection. I mean, this is all rocky road, and there's not really anything like a sidewalk or somewhere you can pull over very easily. We just stopped the car at an intersection, got out, I followed the instructions from some of those websites. If you want to head, I think it was south, and you want to turn, and you want to look in a certain direction, what have you, because lo and behold, the shot was where the Jawa sand crawler was located. And what had actually happened was they took some kids from a nearby school, dressed them up in Jawa costumes, stuck R2-D2 over their shoulders, and walked them on this particular stretch. The sand crawler was added in later, but as you can see, we found the exact location with the three little uh, bumpy rocky hills off in the far left there. And I stood in the exact spot where the Jawas had dragged R2-D2 off to the sand crawler. That was very, very cool. Then it was back into the car, continue on the short little drive up to the artist's pallet parking lot. And lo and behold, you step out of the car and there you are. There is artists. Uh, well, artist palette is up in front of you. You can see these glorious stone colors and that kind of thing, which is why everybody shows up. But not us. We turned and looked to the left at what has been nicknamed R2's Arroyo. It is a very distinctive little canyon bend, and anybody who's seen Star Wars knows that particular shot. There is where R2-D2 rolled along in the first shot where he encounters the Jawas, and we just thought, we are here. This is amazing. This is like a really iconic moment on Tatooine, and we are at it. I remember turning to my sister and saying, we're here. We're on Tatooine. This is awesome. So then we had to crawl down into the Arroyo, and I wanted to get my little R2-D2 to roll through the exact same spot that the real R2-D2 went in. So I got down on my, uh, on my stomach, and I, I got the camera out to try and make a couple of shots to get R2 to kind of look like he was following in the footsteps. Again, the lighting doesn't look right. It's very gray here, and I think I would maybe need to do this at another time of the year, or certainly with a different... I mean, it is sunset, just like in the film, and it doesn't quite look right. However, these are the rocks. You can see that they all line up properly. Um, side note, uh, as we were down there, the people who were up at the top, still looking at Artist's palette, noticed we were doing something on the ground with a couple little shiny items, and uh, one fella shouted down to me, Hey, what do you got down there? I'm like, uh, what do I, how do I explain? I just sort of, yeah, it's R2-D2. It's what? <sighs> It's R2-D2. Uh, and I, I kind of left it there. And apparently he turned to my wife and said, what are they doing? Some kind of uh, geological surveys? She's like, no, no, my good man. No, it's it's Star Wars. And I think that was pretty much the end of that conversation. But we really enjoyed ourselves. Artist palette, an absolute must visit. The following morning, we decided to do the shot of Moss Isley Spaceport, located on the horizon, and you see canyons in the foreground. In the original making of the film, George Lucas had filmed uh, Alec Guinness and Mark Hamill and the droids up on a cliff wall. That was in Tunisia, but he must have realized, oh, I haven't shown what they're looking at, so let's get a view of the canyon in the other direction. So that was easily done from Dante's view in Death Valley. And I remember thinking to myself, this must be an early morning shot because the angle of the, uh, the shadows on the canyon walls are kind of stark. 
and I said to everybody, okay, let's, uh, it's a bit of a drive to Dante's view. Let's get out there, drive all the way up, take the shot. And I'm sure that the, the uh, shadows will look correct because that looks like an early morning scene. We get up there. First of all, it's freezing cold. Now, we went in springtime and during the daytime, we were quite comfortable. We were t-shirts and shorts everywhere. But we got up to Dante's view uh, fairly early in the morning, having had breakfast, and we were freezing. Uh, my wife and brother-in-law actually stayed most of the time in the van. Uh, my sister and I got the figures out and actually had my Obi-Wan and my Luke, my R2 and my 3PO view the can the, the valley where Moss Eisley would be uh, seen in the film. And then, uh, of course, before we got back in the van, we both turned to each other and we did the famous line, Moss Eisley Spaceport. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. And then we got in that van really quick. Also that morning, we decided to jump forward a couple of movies and do Return of the Jedi's scene of R2 and 3PO approaching Jabba's palace. Uh, this is actually not far from Dante's view. This is a stretch of rock area called 20 Mule Team Canyon. And as we drove not too far off the main road, we very quickly noticed the sort of lumpy rock uh, ridge on the left-hand side there I immediately recognized from the bits where R2 and 3PO are approaching Jabba's palace. So we hopped out and did our scene. Now, uh, what's unfortunate is again, and I know I keep bringing this up, I had thought to myself this looks like an early morning scene, and so when we got there I was thinking everything would look correct in the lighting. Certainly other people who have also done this exact same shot have got the lighting very spot on. And when we did it, it was very gray, very early light, didn't look correct. But I'm going to have to hope that the rock formations do the talking for us and point out, yeah, we were there. We were really in the spot where R2 and 3PO approached Jabba's palace. I didn't manage to locate uh, some of the side shots where R2 and 3PO were having various rocks behind them. I know other people have done that. But it's one of those cases of when you're in the moment, when you're actually inside that canyon, you're looking around and you're thinking, where are we supposed to point the camera? There's no obvious uh, location where the uh, film crew would have positioned themselves. But we think we managed to do a pretty decent job. And I, I think this particular bit of footage here showing us trying to find ourselves, that gives you an idea of what the area around looks like. It was still pretty cool to do it, though, and uh, it was funny. I wanted to, it was very important to me to have both my R2 and 3PO walk in that little section there toward Jabba's palace, and my 3PO is quite, all of my figures are quite old. They're from the original 70s. My 3PO doesn't always want to stand up properly, and we tried to get him to stand a few times, and eventually, as I'm holding the camera, my sister decided, right, I'll get him to stand up, and you can see her actually shouting at the figure, oh, come on! It was quite good. Uh, then it was uh, pretty easy to wrap up from that point on and move on to what was going to be our final shot from Tatooine. And then the final shot that we did was the bit where R2 and 3PO part ways. They've just landed. Uh, 3PO has determined he's going to go in this direction where he ends up eventually seeing that giant skeleton. And R2 is going to head off to the rocky bits. And that's actually Mesquite Flat Sand Dunes. Uh, it's um, a bit north of where we were staying in Furnace Creek, and when we got there, it was definitely noticeable. The, the rocky um, uh, canyon walls on the horizon and all the sand dunes in front of us. Unfortunately, there were a few bits of uh, brush and sh shrubs had kind of grown up out of the, uh, out of the desert. I'm not sure. I'm sure a uh, person who knows desert biology would be able to sound off that maybe... Maybe these are the plants that tumbleweeds come from? I'm not sure, but there were quite a lot of them all over the place, and they, they were very difficult to navigate around and get us so that we could at least get a lot of sand in the shot. But we did eventually. We got um, the, the rocky canyon walls on the horizon properly lined up. I got my R2 out there, and uh, we started taking photos, and I even uh, used my fingers to do two little tracks uh, under the R2-D2 figure just to, just to show him heading off into the uh, into the horizon and yeah unfortunately that was the end of our journey we had to then pack up the van and head back to uh, fly home really enjoyed the trip 
I would highly recommend anybody who wants to go and see a Star Wars location that's got a lot of interesting places to visit and not only is it the Star Wars connection but just Death Valley itself is really cool. We regret having not seen some of the other uh, incredible places there are to visit around Death Valley. There's Scotty's Castle, there's a place where some rocks are known to move on their own. Um, there's some really great places in Death Valley. We're actually really intending, as I mentioned before, to go back and visit the place and do not only the Star Wars shots with all the lighting a little closer and try and find some of those other places like where the Banthas were, but in addition to that, just check out Death Valley. It's a very, very neat holiday destination and one that I highly recommend. Anyway, so happy Star Wars Day to everybody, and I guess until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.